वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मृन्मय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कंपेटिव इंडियन लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा नाउ वी विल डिस्कस कंपेटिव लिटरेचर ड्रामा इन इंडिया एंड द मॉड्यूल इज राइटिंग द कॉलोनी टॉम स्टॉपर्स इंडियन इंक द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज रिटन बाय सफिया बेगम टॉमस Strausler was born on 3rd July 1937 to Eugene and Martha Strausler at Glin erstwhile Czechoslovakia his father was a physician in a shoe manufacturing company the company shifted them to singapore however tom with his elder brother and mother were evacuated from singapore just before the japanese invasion later the, they came to darjeeling india unfortunately his father who stayed back in singapore was killed later in 1946 tom's mother married kenneth stoppard a british army officer so thomas strossler got his new name and became tom stoppard the family later shifted to england they settled in bristol and their tom attended dolphin preparatory school in Nottinghamshire and then Pocklington School in Yorkshire all the age of 17 tom quit school to work for a newspaper named western daily press he worked there for 4 years later he joined the evening world as a reporter in 1960 he moved to london and worked as a freelance reporter during that time he began to write plays dramas for television and radio in 1966 his first play rosencrans and guildenstern are dead was staged and immediately received critical acclaim for this play he has received some awards including the new york drama critics circle award for best new play since then he has written various plays for radio television dramas and screen plays now um concentrate on the works of tom stoppard as we discussed earlier before beginning to write plays stoppard was a journalist and theater critic he initially wrote plays for the british radio his plays include the dissolution of dominic boot 1964 AM is for Moon among other things 1964 If you are glad I will be frank 1966 Rosencrans and Guildenstern are dead in 1966 Albert's Bridge 1967 Jumpers 1972 Travelers 1974 and The Real Thing 1982 He also wrote scripts of some films like Brazil Empire of the Sun Billy Bath Bathgate The Russia House and the much acclaimed Shakespeare in Love he occasionally wrote for radio as well with Albert's Bridge he came to be known as a playwright and he has also received Italian prize for it Rosencrans and Guildenstern a dead brought him international recognition as a playwright He is considered to be the most performed playwright of his generation. Literary style of Tom Stoppard. Language and style is very important for Stoppard. Thus while writing he pays more attention to his language use and words. Once he said, I quote, one element of this preoccupation is simply an enormous love of language itself. For a lot of writers the language use is merely a very efficient tool for me the particular use of a particular word in the right place or a group of words in the right order to create a particular effect is important it gives me more pleasure than to make a point which i might consider to be profound i unquote so a uh, for stoppard more than making a point the way he should make a point becomes important concern he draws inspiration from t s eliot and samuel beckett's writing styles now let us 
uh, discuss about the background of the play. Stoppard was commissioned to write a new play for BBC Radio 3 by John Tigerman in 1989. He began to write the play in September 1991 and finished it by next year, October. So first, it was written as In the Native State, 1991, which was later developed for stage performance as the Indian Inc. in 1995. The idea of the play germinated in his mind with a little concept of writing a conversation between a poet and a painter, which is quite interesting. It revolves around this situation where a painter is painting the portrait of the poet and she is busy writing about her experiences of having her portrait done. The play was written uh, keeping in mind uh, Felicity Kendall who acted as Flora for radio and stage plays. He was taken away by Flora's poetry and began to write it. He says, I quote, Then I found the idea of her poetry so perversely enjoyable. I went on writing her poetry for longer than you would believe. The result was in the native state broadcast in 1991, later expand to become Indian Inc. I unquote. The play was dedicated to her mother Laura Kendall, who was part of a traveling Shakespearean company of actors and traveled to India. I quote, I had only been thinking about India in the general sense of using what I have got. I unquote. It feels that one should be using it's sometime sooner or later, said Stoppard in another occasion. Setting of the play. The play is set uh, is, uh, in different time periods and spaces. It takes the readers back and forth into those times. The play begins in colonial India of 1930s and later it takes to the audiences, readers to 1980s, England and India. One can see the three different plots running in uh, these two different times and places. First is the uh, story of Flora Crewe, a British poetess and Nirad Das, who paints her nude portrait. The second plot runs between Mrs. Wan, Flora's younger sister, and Anish Das, Nirad Das's son. The third is about Eldon Pike the scholar who is working on the biography of Flora. It shows how Pike gathers inf information about Flora and in search of it, he also travels to India. There is no specific stage, demarcation and instruction exist except the time. The past and the present is connected through the two paintings and time. There is no demarcation between India and England on the stage or past or present. The playwright says it is not intended that the stage of the stage be demarcated between India and England or past or present. Floor space and even uh, furniture may be common. However, the demarcation between uh, past and present is understood through the reception, through the repetition of lines. For example, after Flora's arrival to Jumapur, India, her lines, I quote, and round the back, I unquote, takes her out of sight of the audiences and one can see Mrs. Swan and uh, Pike reading aloud Flora's letter and the same dialogue in 1980s England. This repetition of lines acts as a switching de device from past to present and it continues throughout the play. Now, uh, let us talk about the plot of the play. The play Indian Inc. is set in two different spaces and time periods. Uh, that is um, uh, India and England of 1930s and 1980s. In 1930, India was under colonial rule during this time. A British poetess called Flora Crewe visited India. She came to India for work as well as for health reason. In India, she met a painter named Nirad Das. He wished to draw a painting of Flora. She agreed and they met at her place. Flora writes letters to her sister informing about her experience in India. After 50 years, Flora's sister receives two guests. First, Pike comes to see her to know more about Flora as uh, he uh, was writing Flora's biography. Later, Anish Das, son of painter Nirad Das, visits Mrs. Wan. 
He shows the nude painting of Flora painted by his father to Mrs. Wan. They decide to hide this information from Pike. Pike comes to India to know more about Flora. Summary of the play. Now let us discuss act wise summary of the play. Act 1. In 1930, Flora Q, uh, Crew, a British poetess, arrives at Jumapur, India. She has come to India to give a lecture in a theosophical society. At the station, she is greeted by Kumar Swami, the local president of the society. Her stay is arranged at a guest house that has a veranda to eat and a servant. Najrul has been appointed to look after her. Flora writes a series of letters to her sister describing her experience in India. In another frame, it is in mid-1980s, Flora's sister Eleanor Swan is in England. She is sitting in her garden over a tea with a scholar, Eldon Pike, who is collecting information on Flora to write her biography. After her lecture at the society, Flora meets Nirad Das who wants to paint her uh, while she sits busy writing. Flora writes and thus paints her and they also discuss about India's struggle for freedom. Now in 1980s, Das' son Anish Das uh, come to meet Mrs. Wan and discuss his father's painting on Flora. He recognized the painting from the book cover of the collected letters of Flora Crew. During this discussion over the painting, Anish and Mrs. Wan begin to present their distinct perspectives of colonial India. However, they remain polite to each other. In colonial India, a British official named David Durance visits Flora to invite her to join him at his club. In 1980s, Pike arrives to India in order to gather more information about Flora. For this, he visits the place where Flora had stayed during her visit to India. Since shifts uh, to 1930s again, Flora is sitting for the portrait and thus is painting her. They are also discussing art, politics and culture. One day, due to hot weather, Flora goes into her room and takes off her clothes. She goes to bed nude and covers herself only with a sheet. Thus gets embarrassed, but she asks him to sit by in a chair in her bedroom. Now the next act, Act 2. In colonial India, 1930s, Flora attends a dance with Durance at the club, where two of them discusses politics and colonial rule over India. Their discussion continues as they go for horse riding and Durance proposes Flora to which she refuses. In India during 1980s, Dilip, an Indian, gathers information about Flora from various sources and helps Pike. In 1930s India, <clears throat> on the Raja's invitation, Flora visits him to see his vast collection of automobiles. Raja gifts Flora a painting. In 1980s setting of India, Pike meets the grandson of Raja, who is also known as Raja. He shows a thank you uh, note from Flora, which she wrote to thank the Raja for the gift. In the 1980s, at Mrs. Swan and Anish are sitting in the garden, looking at the paintings. Mrs. Swan shows Anish the nude painting gifted by Raja, whereas Anish shows her the nude painting of Flora by Das. In the 1930 India, Flora returns from the dance and is informed by Das that the Theosophical Society is suspended due to the political unrest. Das then shows her the nude painting of her which he painted. In, in the 1980s, Mrs. Swan says goodbye to Anish and they decide not to share the information or painting of Flora by Das. At the end, Mrs. Swan is shown visiting her sister Flora's crib in India. The major characters of the play are Kumar Swami. He is the local president of the Theosophical Society in Jumapur, India. He welcomes Flora Crew at the railway station in 1930. Uh, Flora Crew, she is an English poet who uh, comes to India in 1930 to deliver a lecture in the Theosophical Society of Jumapur. She takes this journey for her health reasons too. Presumably, she is suffering from tuberculosis. She dies in India. Niraddas. Niraddas is the Indian man who meets Flora after her lecture in the Theosophical Society and requests to draw her portrait. He specially uh, wanted to paint Flora when she is busy writing poetry. 
Mrs. One. Mrs. One is the younger sister of Flora Crew. She appears on the stage sitting with Pike and reading aloud Flora's letters. Pike. Pike is a scholar who is interested and working on Flora Crew's life. Anish Das. Anish Das is the son of the painter Nirad Das. He visits uh, Mrs. One, Flora's younger sister, to know more about his father. And the minor characters are Raja. In 1930, Raja of Jumapur invites Flora to his place and gives her classical nude painting. Durance. Durance is the English army official who proposes Flora in India. Grandson of Raja. Grandson of Raja in 1980s of India um, meets Pike. He informs and shows the thank you letter Flora wrote to his grandfather. Dilip. In 1980s India, Dilip is an Indian man who helps Pike in collecting information about Flora. Now let us uh, discuss about the major themes in the play. The major theme in the play like the empire. The play is set uh, in the colonial period of India and also in the post-colonial period. The setting of the play in a way is to highlight the significance of the periods and perspective people have about the times. This is the time when the Indians were struggling to free themselves from the British rule. The play majorly deals with the colonial rule in India. We see characters in different time period discussing the issues of colonialism. For example, the Indian character Anish Das refers to the incident of 1857 as the first war of independence, whereas Mrs. Swan looks it as mutiny. Similarly, different characters have different opinions about it, like Flora does not hold the same attitude that of her sister. She is uh, conscious of her presence in India as a representative of the colonizer. The other character like David Durance and his colleagues at the club shares imperialist attitude towards the natives. For example, in the beginning of the act 2, uh, um, an Englishman appears to be in praise of the writer Rudyard Kipling, who was known for his uh, racial attitude towards native society and cultures. We can find the cultural imperialism as one among the themes of the play. Cultural imperialism is a strategy one applies to subjugate other cultures. The dominant culture imposes their culture upon the natives. For example, British colonialism imposed their language and culture upon the uh, Indians and many other colonized countries. Thus, Indians gradually adopted the language and culture. But their will writing back to this play is one such example which writes back to the colonizers. For example, Anish Das and Mrs. One talks about a colonial rule in India. Mrs. One with superior attitude compares Indian colonial rule to the Romans ruled over Britain. To this Anish responds, I quote, We were the Romans. We were up to date when you were a backward nation. The foreigners who invaded you found a third world country. Even when you discovered India in the age of Shakespeare, we already had our, our Shakespeare and our science, architecture, our literature and art. We had a culture older and more splendid. We were rich. Anish thinks that British came to India to plunder the wealth and destroy the indigenous cultures. This shows instances of cultural imperialism and also writing back to the colonizers too. Now, uh, let us discuss the other relevant issues discussed in the play. The play also uh, deals with many other ranging issues along with history, race and colonialism. The play also talks of poetry, visual arts, painting, especially the Indian art and culture. Language use of Stoppard has added to it. The Raja gifted a classic painting to Flora. Thus his painting of Flora also suggests of Indian classical and western styles with little bit of erotics in India. As we can find in Indian tradition that there is... Um, a tradition of erotic creation through sculpture, painting, uh, and all this. There are also discussion of Indian classical forms and rasas. Significance of art, which has been explicated through rasa, is an important aspect of the play. Thus, defines rasa as what you must feel when you see a painting or hear music. It is the emotion which the artist must arouse in you. Rasa highlights the significance of native culture. 
and also also creates a tension between native and colonial attitude towards indigenous culture. The play is also about the Anglo-Indian relationship and understanding of two artists, one poet and other painter. In fact, the major characters are connected through art. It is also about cultural exchanges between two different continents in two different eras. At the end, Flora has been projected as Radha, the Indian female, love icon, who is unrest for love in an empty house. The play has themes of romantic love, loss and nostalgia, which remind us of Western classics. The play also refers to some incidents of Indian freedom struggle, like the Salt March led by Mahatma Gandhi. Now, uh, let us summarize the whole discussion. So, in this module, we have discussed about the playwright Tom Stoppard. We came to know about his personal life and also his literary career too. We also learned about his style of writing. Further, we have discussed the play Indian Ink from various angles. We came to know about the background of the play. We have discussed the plot and summary of the play. Then we have analyzed the major characters and minor characters in it. After then, we have focused on major themes and other relevant issues discussed in the play. For more on this module, please uh, find the e-text, learn more and self-assessment portion. Thank you.